Hello, this is Dr. Fonda Goldman, a licensed naturopathic physician, and today I was going to talk about homeopathy for a better relationship with yourself. Uh, more specifically, the Bach Flower Remedies Serato and Larch for self confidence and self esteem. Please note the information presented here is for educational purposes only and should not be considered medical advice. For any symptoms that persist or worsen, Please consult with a qualified medical professional and it is always best to determine the root cause of any disease and to develop a comprehensive treatment plan and in that line while homeopathy Bach flower remedies can be very effective they may not be appropriate for everyone or as a single therapy so please keep that in mind just a word about Bach flower remedies generally uh, Bach flower remedies are considered a kind of homeopathy which is a paradigm of energy medicine. And if you're interested in more background or history on homeopathy or Bach flower remedies, I would check my first uh, video on Bach flower remedies on the walnut Bach flower uh, remedy um, for that information. The general concept though with Bach flower remedies is that disease stems from an inner struggle. I found these to be particularly helpful and effective for mental, emotional, and spiritual conditions when they present in my office. Um, and if you're interested in this kind of content, um, I would look at the um, my playlist on homeopathy and black flower, black flower remedies. I'm pretty good at organizing my videos into a playlist, so they're easy to find. So let's talk about the first remedy. The first remedy is called Serato. And the keynote here is a lack of self-direction. Um, and so the interstate here that's problematic is that the person is not acknowledging or trusting the higher self, or you call it intuition. And so outwardly what's manifesting or what peop, you, know, you could see with this type of person is they're constantly asking the opinion of other people rather than trusting their own opinion or their own intuition their own guidance and when they do you know get some insight about what what direction they should take they discount their own thoughts about it or their own opinion and so they'll be like they'll dismiss it they'll be like oh that can't be right or it can't be that simple those sorts of statements will come up they tend to uh, research excessively, like they're always looking for more information to help them decide um, because again, they're not trusting their own judgment. Um, and so they tend to gather and hoard a lot of information. And this can also result in sort of living in the head or analysis paralysis. You know, they're just going around gathering information and trying to weigh it all out and probably have their pros and cons list um, to try to figure their way through something, um, but it's really not helping them move forward. The other thing is that their opinions will constantly change because as they're getting new information, you know, they can get information from all sorts of sources, good, bad, trustworthy or not. Um, and so every time they get more information, their opinion can swing or change um, depending on the new information that's been presented to them. And so what can also happen, because they're not really trusting themselves, is that they may tend to follow others or trends with negative results. So the latest, hottest uh, internet trend or diet trend or fashion trend or uh, professional trend, um, you know, they might just follow along and it won't necessarily be a good thing for them. And they are generally sort of needing approval and validation of others. Other people might see them as gullible and take advantage of them because, again, they're, in some respects, you know, kind of led around by the nose a little bit because, again, they're not trusting themselves. So the risk here for somebody like this is that they lack a sense of self, they lack kind of a center within the self, and they're not able to, you know, sort of auto-navigate life. Um, and what can happen is that they end up supporting the agendas of others instead of their own. Because again, if you're not deciding what to do, there are plenty of people who will help you decide. <laughs> and it's usually you know, a decision that's uh, beneficial to them, not necessarily you. Um, so the potential outcome of taking this remedy is um, a greater sense of clarity and surety within the self and not being swayed by others and taking off your own path. 
and have a better relationship with yourself and intuition and you'll wisely act on the knowledge you do acquire um, rather than just analyzing it like really kind of taking a bird's eye view or kind of a wise person's view of all that information that's gathered um, or again just trusting your intuition um, sometimes you don't need extra data right um, and also uh, dreaming might increase because again if you start to trust your intuition your intuition will usually start talking um, more often and louder and even kind of come to you with symbols um, in your dream life so that is serato baklava remedy and then the other remedy which again is is kind of for the same thing self-confidence and self-esteem but it's got a different flavor to it um, and as I've always mentioned in my Bach flower remedy videos, you know, this sort of therapy is really all about the subtleties and the deeper motivations of somebody. So the keynote with this um, remedy is that the person doesn't feel capable. So the interstate here is that the person perceives a failure or, you know, however you want to define that, as something that defines them, defines the self, rather than an opportunity to grow. So if they have an experience of not even failure, but sometimes even lack of success, like maybe they didn't get the top of something, you know, the highest award or something, then they'll take that, internalize that as meaning something negative about themselves and then they'll fail to, <laughs> another failure, they, they won't um, really even try uh, moving forward. Um, they may not try for new positions, higher positions. So like in the realm of employment, these people might be what we would consider not unemployed, but underemployed. So they might be the highly competent or even overly competent um, manager for a department or store or something. But when the opportunity arises to maybe take it up a notch, you know, they become like branch manager or area manager or something. They won't go for it, even if they're more than qualified to do so. Um, and so again, they sort of trust too much any sort of negative experiences that they've had in the past and they tend to have fairly reasonable objections so they may give as excuses like i'm too old or i'm not educated or i don't have a degree and you know if you don't really challenge that or examine that it might seem like oh yeah okay i guess i guess so <laughs> you know it seems kind of reasonable but really it's um it's just a kind of a, an excuse on some level so and this kind of certainty of failure can usually come from childhood not always um, sometimes it's you know the child was having a tough time you know feeling or seeing success with themselves sometimes they're just internalizing the thoughts of other people in their lives you know important adults or you know whoever is around who has that kind of mindset so they just sort of absorb the mindset, even if they've never really examined it um, or s decided if they really want to hold on to that mindset or maybe change things within their own mind. And so they tend to have a very self-limiting and, and fixed concept of self. They won't even really let themselves try, um, you know, again, for if you want to call it fear of failure, fear of success, because even if they're successful, they may not feel capable of maintaining that success. So and kind of show up as both. Um, and they tend to admire other people who are challenging themselves and people who are like putting themselves out there and kind of rising through the ranks, so to speak. Um, but they just don't believe that they're worthy or capable of it. Um, and so these are sort of like, I remember one time I was playing cards with a group of people and I noticed pretty quickly this one guy, he either played and won or he didn't play and so clearly he was the kind of guy who only played the game if he knew he was going to win so he was he didn't want to you know lose like he, he was so anti-losing that he only played if he knew he was going to win which is sort of you know to some extent um you know he's he's not going to challenge himself right he's not going to risk whatever he sees it as losing face or um, just, you know, a way to grow or something to learn or just to have fun, you know. Um, so that example, kind of funny example came to mind when I was putting this talk together. Um, 
And so the risk here for large people, um, people in a large state, they do not feel empowered and um, they prevent themselves from living at their highest level. So they have kind of a stunted personal growth because again, they don't even allow themselves, uh, you know, uh, take themselves to the starting gate. They won't even get that far. Um, and so the potential outcome of taking this remedy for people in the state is that they do persevere and they do challenge themselves. Um, they, they attempt new challenges. Um, and they start to see that each person has unique gifts um, and then it's really our responsibility for sharing them to uplift the world. Um, and sometimes as a yoga teacher, um, often enough, I've, I've talked to students about, you know, um, you know, keep your eyes on your own mat. <laughs> a lot of people, even in yoga class, um, are like, oh, I, you know, when I say I'm a yoga teacher, they say, oh, I like yoga, but I'm not good at it. And, you know, I would sort of say, why do you, what do you mean by you're not good at yoga? I mean, they're like, well, I can't touch my toes and I can't do this pose and this and that or whatever. And again, it's not gymnastics. I mean, yoga is really about the internal um, atmosphere of somebody. And so um, it's really about not, are you touching your toes or not? But it's like when you're in the process of attempting something like that, what is your internal state of being? Are you in a state of openness? Are you in a state of flow? Or it, are you in a state of criticism of self or others? Like I'm better than them or I'm less than them. Um, so that's really yoga. Uh, but again, a lot of people just think it's something different um, than what its deepest intention is about. So again, a different sort of flavor to self-confidence and self-esteem, but um, still effective when appropriately apply, applied. So if you're interested in this topic of self-esteem and self-confidence, again, you want to make sure the, the trick with the Bach flower remedies is getting the right one. And again, it's all about subtlety. So some other remedies that may be helpful, um, but slightly different, um, the Bach flower remedy walnut, that remedy is used best when somebody's beginning a new phase of life, whether it's biological or social or age related or um, because sometimes we, we have a little bit of fear, a little bit of inertia of like moving into that next phase and don't exactly know how to navigate it. We may feel a little bit flustered in the beginning, but it's not necessarily like a deep sense of feeling inferior to others, comparing yourself to others or knowing what to do but not trusting it um so again a different flavor um the bach flower remedy pine might be helpful this is for people for some reason for different reasons can feel guilty or shameful or, or have self regrets or self-blame and because they blame themselves or feel guilty about some something they don't feel worthy to try things or give themselves the best life because they don't feel like they deserve it because of something that happened in the past. Um, either it actually happened with them or to them or something. Um, or again, it could be another case where they just picked up that mindset from the people around them when they were young. Um, another remedy that may be helpful um, is honeysuckle. Um, and this one is more of a sense of somebody who's living in or really truly attached to the past like you know you wouldn't know it's 2022 it seems like in their head in their world that's like 1975 or something <laughs> you know they just never really kind of moved on because they're so deeply entrenched in another time for different reasons um and another one to consider is a black flower remedy wild oat and this is for people who tend to be distracted from their true purpose. Like they've kind of been here and there and everywhere and tried different things, but it's never sort of gelled um, for them. They never really got traction. Um, and this is sometimes because they're trying to fit their unique self and sort of constellation of talents into the framework of others. Um, so anyway, I have uh, videos on all of these. So if any of that seems relevant or kind of uh, dings your intuition, I would check those out. So there you have it, uh, two more Bach Flower Remedies for helping you develop a better relationship with yourself. 
So I hope uh, you have found this helpful. And until the next one, take care.